Thank you for being here today. Um, first and foremost, I want to express my gratitude to Peyton Owens, Mark Coyle, for uh, giving me this incredible opportunity. Um, obviously, as an alumni of this institution and uh, an alumni of Gopher Baseball, this is not just a professional achievement for me, but a deeply personal one as well. Um, the university, Gopher Baseball, has been a place that is obviously very special to me. Um, it's a place where I've grown as a player, as a coach, and as a person. And uh, the values and lessons that I've learned here um, have been instrumental in shaping me as the man, the father, and the leader that I am today. Um, I want to acknowledge my family, Claire and Mila, um, and my new son coming in August. Uh, obviously, a support system at home to take on something like this is so critical, and uh, they've been awesome every step of the way. So I love you girls, and I look forward to our future together. Um, I also want to extend my deepest thanks to John, to 14. Um, his mentorship and leadership has been instrumental in, in getting me to where I am right now and getting to the program to where it is right now. He's obviously left his mark here with Gopher Baseball and in the state of Minnesota with amateur baseball as a whole. So um, I'm so grateful for his support and for the legacy that he's left here. Um, obviously, I've got big shoes to fill, but uh, I feel very confident that uh, I'm going to be able to honor his tradition and honor his legacy of transparency and of integrity and of authenticity here and, and be able to build upon the rock-solid foundation that he has built. Um, to the players, I'm excited to get going. We've got a lot to do. We've got a group of young and talented men on this team. Um, we've got a journey ahead that's going to be filled with hard work and dedication, and uh, I think with that shared commitment and doing it together, you're going to hear me talk a lot about that, being able to do it together. We're going to be able to put a product on the field that's going to impress our fans, that's going to impress our alumni, and that's going to make everybody proud at the university. Um, finally, I want to thank our alumni. You know, I don't think that there is a more important and involved alumni group anywhere in college baseball and maybe even anywhere in college athletics. Um, so I look forward to upholding the on and the off field standard that you guys have set here. And uh, I know that uh, our players will understand the privilege that it is to put on the Gopher baseball uniform every day. That being said, we're going to play hard. We're going to play fast. We're going to play the high level of fundamentals. That's a Gopher baseball tradition. So I'll open it up for questions after that. How surreal is it that you're standing here as the head coach? I'm not quite sure it's sunk in yet. You know, I, I, I've told a few people it's it's been straight into business mode as it needs to um, with the transfer portal and trying to construct a roster right now. There's not a lot of time for sentimental, you know, feelings. Uh, I've gone there briefly a few times and then gotten a phone call immediately. So it snapped me out of it pretty fast. But um, I'm guessing at some point this summer I'll have an opportunity to sit down, stare out the lake, really understand the uniqueness of this position. Like I said, it, the last time this position was available, I was 10 years from, from being born. So it's it's been a while. Yeah. Pat Rogers, John, always talk about your competitors. Yeah. Well, I'm just, I like to compete in everything that I do. Um, that's been a hallmark of, of not just my career, but also a hallmark of my life. I grew up with three brothers. Um, I, I needed to learn how to compete at a young age just to uh, survive in that household. So, um, you know, I, I think every day that you show up to the field, there's an opportunity to compete. You know, it's not just when the lights turn on. It's not just a Friday, a Saturday, or a Sunday in the spring. But every time you show up to the field, it's an opportunity to compete. And for my guys, it's not just on the field, but it's in the classroom, it's in the community. We need to find ways to be the best, the best at what we do in all of those categories. And, and uh, so I think they can, they can feel that off of me, my desire to win, my desire to compete. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's just it's a hallmark of who I am. It's a big part of my personality. And, uh, and, and competition is something that I wake up in the morning and, and I live for. Yeah. 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 It's been a journey. You know, I mentioned my my family, and uh, it's gonna it's gonna be hard for me not to get emotional talking about them. But my wife has just been 
awesome in, in keeping me grounded, but also keeping me healthy and able to do my job and continuing to climb the ladder here that I need to, to get back to optimal health. Um, but it's also been important, you know, in my leadership. Uh, I've learned a lot throughout my process, mental health and struggles that I've never faced before. It's, it's, it's opened up windows um, to different aspects of life that, that, that people deal with that I thought I knew and I thought I understood, but I didn't. And now I can go there with guys. I can go there with guys dealing with it personally that have family members that are going through things like that. And uh, I think it's just added to my ability to connect with guys, with, with, with people in general. And um, I'm proud of that. I'm very proud of that. Well, it's a long story, and quite honestly, it's 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 ongoing. Um, so, in two thousand one, my daughter was born, and shortly after that, I, I started to experience some just weird, um, obscure symptoms. Started with some floaters in my eyes. I felt like I had a lump in my throat. I had some kind of instability walking and some discoordination. So, I went in and saw a neurologist, a functional neurologist. Um, he thought it was a reactivation of a concussion, a previous concussion. I've got a long concussion history. I played hockey. I played football in high school. Um, I've done some mixed martial arts. Uh, so all areas that, that, that can happen. Um, and after trying to figure out, okay, what is this? Can I fix this? I was getting worse. So he recommended that I do a tick test, tick-borne test, and they're not super specific. You can't test for Lyme disease specifically. You have to test for the antibodies. Everybody's so familiar with that now with COVID, you know, being, being more recent. Um, and they found out that, okay, you've got, you've got some stuff going on, and you've got a lot of bacteria in you. You've got some viruses that have been reactivated as a result of it. Um, so I started treating it aggressively. You know, Mike commented on how competitive I, I am. Um, so my, my thing was, we're going to, we're going to kick this thing's butt right away. Um, and so I started throwing everything that I possibly could, every antibiotic you could think of. I was throwing herbals at it. I was throwing all that I could at it. And, uh, it made for, um, it wrecked my body. I'll just say it like that. It wrecked my body. Uh, I didn't really understand that as quickly as you had to kill stuff, you had to get rid of it and allow your body to do that. So, uh, in 2012 or excuse me, 2022, um, around Thanksgiving time, my body tanked. My liver was backed up. I had uh, what they called hepatic encephalitis, so I had ammonia in my brain. Um, I was having a hard time walking. I was having a hard time talking. I couldn't drive. I could hardly take care of my family. It was a scary deal. You know, I went down to Florida, went to a special place down there that was able to put a port in me, detox me like crazy, give me some antibiotics through the port, and got me back to baseline. And ever since then, I've been climbing, you know, each rung on the ladder daily here to get back to a spot where I can, you know, have the energy that I need, that I can think clearly enough to be able to, uh, to, to, to operate in an effective way. And uh, it's, you know, I wouldn't say I'm out of the weeds quite yet. There's still some things that I'm, I'm waiting to get back here. I can't work out as hard as I want to work out sometimes. Um, I get tired a little bit faster than I normally would. Um, but with all that being said, I can do everything that I need to do on a daily basis, uh, both obviously here for my job and also at home for my family. Just talking about coaches in general, just what he's meant to you personally, obviously through the recruiting process, then as a player, then working with him, and then as you mentioned, just during this tough time in your life as well, what has he meant to you? Everything. I mean, it's it, it, it feels, um, you know, it, it feels unjust to be able to just throw some words at it with John. Um, and I think anybody that's played with him has a hard time finding words for what he's done. He's such a unique individual. He's so authentic. He's so transparent. And um, he's just, he, he just allows you to operate both as a player, but also as a staff member of his with a level of confidence in your own ability. And um, I mean, he's just such a special person. I, 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 that's, that's the best word that I can describe for it. He's such a special and a unique person that extracts everything you possibly could out of somebody. Yeah. What, what do you feel like you'll take from him as a coach? As sure. Well, you know, I think the authenticity piece is, is number one. I think you're, you're getting somebody who's authentically me, and, and John's encouraged that out of me over the course of my playing and my coaching career. So um, we are different in some ways. We have different personalities. We interact with athletes differently. Um, in no way uh, am I trying to be John. Um, and, and, and 
uh, we're going to do things differently on the field. You know, we're going to operate at a much higher speed than we have before. Um, I've got a, a different vision for what we're going to do here offensively. Obviously, I've had control of, of the pitching staff. Um, but the other part of it is defensively, you know, we, he's developed a, a longstanding tradition of playing quality defense. We've got to get back to that. We haven't played very good defense the last few years. We haven't picked up the baseball. We haven't thrown it very well. Um, so we've got to get a group of guys out there who are committed to playing catch on the field. And I think a lot of that comes back to if you study our season um, this past year, we, we lost 10 games just because we didn't operate very well under stress. You know, we just didn't. Uh, when you look at that, we didn't make the big play. We didn't make the big pitch. We didn't get the big hit. And, and that was worth about 10 games, which would have been the difference between, you know, playing in the Big Ten tournament, maybe even still playing today and, you know, not playing. Um, so we've got to create an environment in practice daily that uh, stresses that component of, of being able to get guys comfortable operating under stress, not just to a level where they can survive, but to a level where they can, they can thrive under it. Yeah. You know, number one, transparency. I think just transparency with our guys, understanding where they're at at all times. Uh, in this day and age with the transfer portal, and I'm sure we're going to get to that, um, guys want to know where they're at. On the depth chart, they want to know where they're at from a future and a vision standpoint. They want to know where they're at in their player development program and what's planned for them. So transparency is number one. Number two is grit, you know, and that, that goes back to my previous answer. Um, grit for me is just getting better when things get worse, you know. Um, and, and obviously I think – that's something that I've been able to display personally. Um, that's something guys see out of me is a high level of grit. And then the last piece of it is just passion, passion and understanding of, of the depth and, and tradition and history that this program has. Um, so if you can get on the field and you can compete with a high level of passion, a lot of things go well. You know, when you lose that passion, you lose that edge, you lose that competitive fire, that's when, that's when you start to struggle on the field. Does it mean to have John's endorsement, not only John, but Paul Molitor as well? Um, yeah, it means a lot. I, I think, you know, obviously those two guys are, are, are notable um, in regards to the support that I have here, but there's been countless alumni that are important that have, that have also reached out as well in, in full support of me. And, and um, so just knowing that I have a backing of a lot of people that have contributed to making this program what it is, it's special. It's a unique responsibility um, that's not lost on me, uh, but 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 also uh, it's exciting um, knowing that I don't have an uphill battle trying to get the respect of, of people like that. Yeah. Over the last four years, the ERA for the team in the whole just decreased, and then you mentioned yeah. going into the season, injuries obviously hindering last year, and then Rooney goes down, but then you have your three starters pretty much last the whole season and go throughout it. Just what is it? What have you been able to see from the building standpoint on this staff as well. Well, our, when you look at our team, our strength is in our young arms right now. Um, we've got a tremendous group of young arms who are talented, and they're only going to get better. You know, historically, that's what happens. You get Minnesota kids who come in here, and they've got some aspects that they're good at, other aspects that need to be cleaned up. But it's quite a jump from high school amateur baseball in our state to playing in the Big Ten, especially the new Big Ten. So um, I, I fully expect us to get better and better on the mound for our guys to continue to develop. Uh, when you look at our young staff, you know you look at guys like Will Whalen and Kyle Remington and Tyler Hemish and, and, and you know Caden Capamacho. There's some young guys there who have tremendous stuff. It just comes down to their ability to execute it consistently so that when you send them on the mound, you know what you're going to get out of them. It's happened a bunch of times. I mean, my phone hasn't stopped ringing, as you could probably imagine. Um, you know, just coaches congratulating me. Some of them are trying to schedule games. We've got recruits like crazy. We've got our own current guys um, trying to figure out where they stand in this whole picture. So, um, yeah, it's been nonstop. And, and it seems like every time that I've had a chance to just take a breath and figure out where I'm at and how unique this opportunity is, something pops up that, that, that is business-related. So, yeah. Mentioned the changing landscape of college baseball, just in the different aspect that it is of Minnesota being here, possibly more games on the road. What's your pitch to incoming recruits and then people in the transfer portal of why Minnesota is the right decision? Well, we're unique. We're unique in the aspect of, of 
we're able to offer a balanced experience. Okay. Um, there's very few places in power five baseball, but in power five sports in general that can uniquely sell the academic piece of stuff, the ability for us to develop you as a human and as a man for the next 50 years of your life, and also be able to give you an opportunity on the field. Um, and, and, and when you combine all of those, there's people out there that want that experience. There really is. There's thousands of people in the portal. I just got done. I was just in the portal this morning. There's thousands of, of guys in there, and there's more every day. Um, but you have to just make a commitment to going through that list, to making a lot of phone calls, to getting a lot of guys on campus. And, and if, you, if you make that commitment and, and you talk to enough people, you're going to find guys that want to be here and want to be here for the right reasons. Yeah, U.S. Bank Stadium's been been great for us. Obviously, minimizes the travel. It's a it's a true home venue for us. Um, so it is important long term for us to to have some stability here as a program. Um, that being said, you know we've we've built a culture, and I'm going to continue to stress building a culture that, like I said, gets better when things get worse. So if we need to go on the road and we need to find ways to win games on the road, that's what we're going to do. You know. That's, uh, you know, I've said it before, that, that's a situation that I know our administration's working hard to try to figure out and to make sure that we have something established there long term. Um, but whether it's this year or next year or years to come, um, that's kind of, you know, not a thought in my mind. It's how can we get the best team on the field that can operate in any environment, whether we got to play in a parking lot or we get to play at U.S. Bank Stadium. We need to have a group of guys that can go out and compete wherever that is. Sure. What do you see the realistic ceiling of the program? Well, we're going to find out. Um, I think that we have uh, enough here to be able to win at a high level. I shouldn't say I think. I, I know that we have enough here to win at a high level. Um, when you look at, at, at the recruiting aspect and trying to keep guys in state, that's twofold. Um, you need to look at where guys go out of high school, but then you also need to look at where they end up. Um, when you study our roster, we've got a handful of guys who – thought the South was where they wanted to be, thought the, the ACC, the SEC was where they wanted to be. They went there, they had a different experience than what they had envisioned, and now they're back on our team and helping us at a high level. So um, as, it, as it pertains to recruiting, our approach is not just trying to get those guys immediately out of high school, but also developing a relationship with them so that if they end up going somewhere and it isn't what they envisioned, there isn't the type of opportunity that they wanted, it isn't the well-rounded experience that we're able to offer, that we've gotten enough of a, of a relationship built up so that we're their first call when they get in the portal. Um, and that's the unique, you know, modern landscape. That's where we're at right now. We don't have the NIL money um, that some places do. That's just the reality of it. We're working hard with Dinky Town athletes to try to build that pot up as much as we can. Um, but I think when you work through that recruiting process, you have to look at it on both ends of it, both where they go out of high school, but also where they end up. Just on the MLB pipeline, pretty much that Coach Anderson built just what I think it's over 30, 36, 37 years of a player being drafted from Minnesota. Yeah. How do you build on that? But also, is that a nice thing that you can use in your pitches to those people from the transfer portal? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. That that's that's it's special. I mean, it's unique and it is special. Um, we talk a lot about return on future investment here. Okay, it's really easy to talk about. This, this amount of dollars out of NIL money or this amount of dollars in scholarship. But one of the, the pitches that, that is genuine to our recruits is, hey, you can come here, you get an opportunity to play, whether that's pitch on a Friday night or hit third hole in our lineup, and you've got to look at that as an opportunity for future earnings, okay? So, yeah, I could go to an SEC school, grab a little bit of money, but who knows where you're going to end up on their depth chart. If you come and you play at Minnesota, you're going to play. You're going to get your opportunities. And if you do that and you succeed and you buy into a development program, historically, you're going to be able to play at the next level. And so eventually you're going to get yours. Yeah. Well, 
Well, I think that's where the transparency piece is so important. You know, being on the same page with your student athletes has never been more important. Um, more times than not, when you have issues, when you have fear, like you had mentioned, pop up, it's because guys don't know where they stand. There's confusion there on where am I at on the depth chart? What are your, what's your vision for me? Where are we going with this thing? Um, so I've made a personal commitment throughout my career and now as a head coach to make sure that, that I'm having regular conversations with guys on our team about this is where you're at, you know, good, bad, and different. This is where we see you so that you can make the best decision for yourself and for your family, but it's important for them to know where they're at. I think a lot of times guys get fearful, they get scared, they start to wonder what the grass is like on the other side of the road when they don't know exactly where they're at. And so that, that again, comes back to one of my core values, and that's just being transparent with them. Anything else for Ty? Thanks a lot. Awesome. Thank you, guys.